Hello there, this is Mark, and today I'm going to teach you how I paint rocks. Rocks are pretty interesting because there's so many different types, there's so many different uh, you know, forms and shapes and textures that it's, uh, it's a little bit hard to, uh, to teach. So what I'm going to do is just pick one type of rock, but uh, just understand that this process is fairly similar to all of them. The first thing we're going to be doing here is start with like a, a base gray. So we're going to start with, a, you know, on a separate layer, uh, just drawing random shapes basically. So, you know, a bunch of different brush strokes, something that looks like a, you know, like a self-contained shape. So, you know, nothing sticking out or anything like that. So something like this. And it's, you know, it's good if it's rough around the edges, right? It's a rock. So now that we have this, uh, what we're going to be doing is lock the layer so that uh, we can't paint, you know, uh, anywhere else. And what we're going to be doing is just kind of forming, like getting a, a soft brush and creating kind of like a, a sphere shadow around this thing. So something like that. So now it's like a very, you know, very um, clean rock, a very soft rock. That's not what we want, but we're just trying to get the range of values that we'll be uh, using to paint in the details and all the different faces and all this stuff. So now that we have this, uh, I like to use my very textured brushes here from my advanced set. Uh, those are really, really good for rocks and things like that. So I'm going to grab yeah, this one here. And from there, from this point on, it's basically um, trying to imagine where the light is coming from and where it's not reaching. So. At this point, you know, we're going to start with something very, very simple. So kind of like a, a top-down light situation. So the light's coming from the top. It's very diffuse light. There's not, not much to it. Uh, and basically, we're going to add a bunch of planes that are facing in that direction. And how you do that, it's you just click and out-click on the, you know, the brightest color. Then we're going to add a bunch of brush strokes like this. So right away, you can kind of get this, uh, this feel that these are all the planes uh, facing up and that's why they're being lit uh, the most and this is kind of like a, yeah on the sides here in the shadows So we're going to be working on this a little bit more uh, making it a little bit more intricate, you know adding smaller brush strokes um, But basically what I like to think about when I do when I do rocks is uh, imagine a bunch of like broken cubes and then you're stacking them together and kind of mushing them um, So I like to get these these kind of like you know, stairs pattern, you know, like a, you can, one stair, one step here, another one here, another one here, another one here, you can kind of climb up that, that rock, and I like that feel, but of course, you know, you could, you could have a bunch of different ones, maybe, uh, it's more like, a, it's more like square, more blocky, maybe it's a little bit rounder, a little bit softer, maybe the steps are, maybe there's no such thing as these, these big steps, maybe it's, uh, you know, the details are a little bit smaller, but yeah, so, kind of imagine like this rock has been like broken a bunch of times and those are all the pieces that are left so that's starting to look pretty cool um, next step once I have kind of like the basic uh, like s basic lighting for the rock I like to add a bunch of cracks in it so you can already see there's some but uh, let's go in here and add like you know, darker ones to make it really obvious where this rock is cracked something like this so with this, it's important that the lines look kind of random, but it can't be like what you want to once you want to what you want to avoid is patterns. Uh, whenever you do like uh, something natural that you find in nature, uh, there's rarely any patterns there. Uh, it's mostly just you know like random shapes. Uh, you you won't find you know for example like uh, this part here. You're not gonna. It's very rare that you'll find something like this. Know, where it kind of repeats like this boop, 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 boop. it might happen but whenever you do this like it really attracts the eye and that's kind of something you want to avoid unless the, that, that part of the rock is that part of the rock is somehow like important and you want to you know bring attention to it but most of the time that's not the case so here I'm gonna add a crack in here like this all right something like that so that's pretty good um, now I'm going to refine the silhouette. So I'm going to unlock this thing. Oops, unlock this thing here, and kind of, kind of go with the flow. So now everything that is facing up, I want to make sure that's, you know, if that the corner is 
properly showed. So something like this. So after all, this this thing is not in two D. It's like a you have to imagine that it's in three D a little bit. So get a little bit of shadow like this, and then the rock you know continues behind something like that. Over here as well. Now something to look pretty interesting. The next step we're going to be doing is so after this what I'd like to do is kind of create a uh, like a selection so you control click on the on the rock itself on uh, not the rock itself on the layer and then it selects the rock and then you create a new layer and what we're going to be doing is just uh, adding a bunch of different different colors in there so right now it's very artificial looking so I'm gonna grab a brush, let's see, it has a bunch of like dots on it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And make it a little bit bigger. And we're gonna be working in color. So we're gonna saturate this thing a little bit. So add some earthy tones to it. Very, very subtle. So I'm gonna drop the opacity a little bit. Make that brush even bigger. So a little bit of red maybe. And some greens, no, not some greens, maybe some desaturated purples. Alright, and then maybe you grab an even bigger brush and go and multiply and kind of go like along the creases, along the cracks, and add some ambient occlusion to those cracks. So something like this. And that's going to be. So I'm going to combine those two. I uh, don't need two layers anymore. I'm going to still keep it locked and kind of go in the crack like this and add uh, add some some shadows in the cracks to give it that 3D look. Bring back the opacity. And then you can also go around a little bit to to bring back that spherical shape a little bit more. If we lost it too much. All right, starting to look pretty cool. Now, um, basically, I'd be done with this, you know, as far as the shape goes. Uh, you know, you could refine the details a lot more, but the next steps are going to be uh, pretty much just lighting the rock. So right now, it's you know, it's not being lit by by much, uh, just like a very soft top light. I'm going to add some shadow on the ground just to to ground it a little bit more. Now we're going to be uh, adding two more light sources. So the first one, well, actually, we're going to be adding three. But the first two are the most important. The first one is going to be uh, the sky. So any light from the sky, uh, because most of the times rocks are outside, uh, so they will be lit by some blue light coming from the sky. Uh, so for this, you know, you would take whatever your color, whatever your sky color is, and kind of like paint it over it. So we can always create a new layer here. Go back to normal mode. And kind of just paint that in. I'm going to go and select this brush here. Actually, I want to go a little bit. So yeah, so the this is clearly too much. We're going to be erasing it. But everything that's facing up, basically, is going to receive that light. So don't worry about opacity for now. I'm going to be erasing it. So everything is facing up again. I'm going to be adding that blue light. All right, something like that. So now we can go and erase the stuff that we don't need. So it's clearly too much. So just to leave, leave a hint of the blue from the sky. And you know, in this case, you know, depending on on the 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 light the lighting situation on your in your painting. Uh, but for me here, I'm going to have some sh uh, some sun shining onto that rock, so that blue needs to be pretty subtle. But uh, So let's create a new layer now, and we're going to be doing the same thing, but with the, the sun. So you can imagine, you know, this light source here is coming from there, and then we're going to add another one coming from... Mm, it can be any, any side, really, but uh, let's go and add it coming from this angle. So now, uh, basically, all the 
the planes of the rocks that are facing you know this light source here will be lit more than the other ones so you know of course we're not going to get any lights uh, down here uh, but we will get some on this side so i don't want to go too crazy so what i like to do here is kind of like select the lights and then draw very very faintly on it color pick that and then undo so that you get kind of like a just a very very subtle light to add on top so we're going to create a new layer we already have it all right so now yeah we're just going to add uh add this light and then in here you can add different uh you know, different different breaks in the rock if there weren't any yet yeah just kind of go over there uh, over everything and you know try to see where the that light can hit and where it can't so maybe you know over here it's kind of blocking the light for this area so maybe we're not gonna get any down here something like that or maybe we're gonna get a little bit here and then you can have you kind of have like the shadow zone you kind of do like the rim the edge always a little bit lighter all right so now let's just erase all the crap over it and now we're starting to have something that's pretty cool there you go that's kind of how I paint my rocks and then you can combine all this stuff and start to, uh, to just refine a little bit so now we have all the colors that we need and then you can just go and color pick, you know, color pick things and kind of add details, maybe like smaller details in the cracks here, smaller cracks, depending on how big that uh, that rug is going to be on the screen. But yeah, now we kind of have like a really nice range of, of colors, of values to work with. So then you just go in, color pick and kind of define your, your, sh your, your shapes a little bit more if you want to. Maybe add some, some more holes and... Uh, Maybe you want to add gray some uh, some dirt over it. I'm gonna go multiply something like this, and then you can also, and of course, go back and paint over it all to kind of tone it down if it's too much. Something like this. Alright, so yeah, you get the idea. So that's pretty much my process when I paint rocks. So remember uh, how we started. So we start with kind of like a neutral neutral color. So it can be any shape. Uh, you just, you know, draw whatever shape that you kind of like or whatever. Um, and then you lock. After that, you add a little bit of shadow at the bottom to kind of create like a, a, a sphere as much as you can. Uh, you can even add a little bit of highlights at the top like this and after this you go in and you add your plane so you you know you decide on whatever uh, what kind of color you want your rock to be and then you add in uh, lights depending on your main light source where, where it's going to be so let's I start from the top so we can do that again here a bunch of different planes to your rock doesn't have to look like much just yet uh, it's right now we're just trying to get like the overall shape and yeah now you can kind of erase Try to find like interesting shapes in this. All right, and uh, yeah, from there, as uh, you remember, we add kind of like the cracks if we want any, the darker cracks to make it a little bit more dynamic. To to have you know some areas that are a little bit darker, uh, you can also like create holes, you know, in this case, uh, or like bigger cuts. And then from there, as you remember, you just add the light sources. So the two light sources. And there you go. You know that's how I create my rocks. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the the only part that's a little bit tricky is uh, you know getting the kind of like the, the right colors in there maybe and getting the the shading done properly. So uh, but yeah, creating rocks. You know as as you've seen here, it's super simple. So you just have to go like a, with a like a big square brush. I always recommend that because it's a lot more. Uh, I don't know. It looks a lot more like a rock. You know compared to like a round brush. Uh, you, you can also get you know decent results with a round brush but it's a lot I don't know it's a lot harder uh, for me the, the the 
square brush just works fantastic for this. And uh, yeah, so you know, a brush with a bit of texture also helps because there's already you know a bunch of texture just by default. So yeah, after that, it's just a matter of cleaning it up as much as you want, polishing up as much as you want. Uh, you know, adjusting the lighting depending on your scene. And one more thing before I forget also, that's uh, pretty important that I forgot. It always helps to ground your uh, your rock if you add some bounce light. So whatever, you know, whatever light you have that is your, your main light, in this case the sun, uh, you'll want to add, uh, to add some light that kind of represents uh, the, the light of the, the ground basically bouncing back on that rock. So, you know, for example, if I had a bunch, a bunch of grass here, something like this. So you would take kind of like that color and bounce it back onto the rock itself. So, so in this case here, I would take this brown here and kind of, uh, yeah, just have it bounce back onto the rock from the from below. Uh, very, very subtly. Uh, you know, this would, be, this would be a lot more intense, say if the, uh, if the floor, if the ground was wider or if it was like sand or something like this, then the light would bounce back a lot more. So for example, you know, if you had sand like this Let's add back the shadows here yeah if you had something like this for example uh, you would take that color and then maybe like saturate it a little bit uh, but that that would be the color that bounces back onto the rock so we get something a lot more intense right so something like this uh, that would make a lot more sense so uh, yeah, there we go. So you know, depending on whatever is bouncing back onto the rock, uh, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, you know, if it's if it's dirt, because the color is dark, it just gets absorbed. Most of, most of the light gets absorbed. But once it's white, you know, uh, or lighter, like any lighter color, that will bounce back on the rock a lot more. So yeah, just uh, you know, take that into consideration whenever you do that that bounce light, if you do it. Uh, but always, it always grounds the rock a lot more. So you know, if uh, you know, if I didn't have this this bounce light here, it wouldn't quite fit in that scene so pretty important still there you go guys so i hope this was helpful uh really quick tutorial well kind of so yeah let me know if you guys liked it i will see you guys next time thanks for watching